In today's mini tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can actually introduce some branching paths into a loop such that the way a trial proceeds depends on how participants have responded so far in the trial. Now to do this, we're going to create a sample experiment. And so I've got a stimulus sheet here with just six words. What we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to rename this to be our how about we'll make this an old new decision. Let's pretend this is a memory test uh, at the end of a, an ex a memory experiment after participants have studied a big list of words. So we're going to have participants make a decision. Um, on this trial, we're going to show participants the contents of word stim and make sure to set every repeat uh, for any variable here. This will be our old new decision uh, trial. And in addition to showing the word stimulus, let's actually add a scale at the bottom so that we can remind our participants of a couple of buttons. Let's use uh, the button C for old and M for new, and we'll call this old new scale. Now, if we went ahead and created a loop around this, we're going to set number of repetitions to one because we only want to go through this, this list of stimulus words once. We're going to call this our, uh, this is, these are our test trials. Going through randomly is fine. And all we need to set now is our stimulus file under conditions here. So we can go ahead and select this Excel sheet, which is the one I've got open right over here. All right, so our loop is now set up and it should loop through these six items. And actually one more thing we're going to add, we're going to give these an infinite duration because we want to get keyboard responses here. And we're going to add a keyboard object so that we can actually get those responses. And we'll call this the old new key. And people can press either the button C for old or M for new. Uh, if you remember, that's what we put on our scale. Right, if we look at our scale, C is old, M is new. And actually one more thing we should do while we're here is actually change the X and Y coordinates. We'll set this to negative 0.25 so it appears below the old new text. So we'll have our text in the center of the screen, the scale below it, and we're picking up keyboard inputs. If we go ahead and click run, what we will see is our trial. Now it doesn't look very, very tidy. I mean, the alignment of C and M is off, but you guys get the idea. Um, for each trial here, we can make a response, old, new, and so on. Now, one thing I'm gonna add just so it's easier to see when we've pressed a key is a new routine. I'm gonna call this blank 500, and it will be inserted there. And this is just going to be a blank slide of half a second. So I'm inserting a text object with no text. And if we go ahead and run one more time, we can see what impact that had. So we get the same uh, question for grass, but you can see every time we press a button, the scale disappears. All right, so let's introduce our branch. So let's say that on the old new trial, every time a participant says that an item is old, we want to ask them a follow-up question. Let's say that when a participant calls an item old, we want to ask them if they can recollect details about the item from the study phase, or if they just have a feeling of familiarity. Basically, we can ask them a remember no follow-up question. So in order to do this, we need a new routine. We'll call this the remember no trial. We'll add it after the blank. And in here, we will once again have the uh, word stimuli that we're going to show, word stim, and we're going to set this to set every repeat so it actually draws the value from the word list there. We're going to add, a, oh, sorry, I should make this infinite actually. Now we're going to add another scale. We'll call this the RKN or the RK scale. And here we're going to say, remember versus no, and let's just say R and K. So we'll take the buttons R and K. We'll set the scale, the position to negative 0.25 in the Y axis, so that this is below the word. And we'll go ahead and we'll add a keyboard response here, the RK key. 
and here we will accept the keys of R and K. And we will go ahead and also insert a blank after that RK decision. And if we go ahead and run our experiment, what we will find is that after every trial now, after an old new decision is made, we also get a remember no decision. Again, my scales are not lining up. Uh, bear with me, guys. Uh, it's not essential for this purpose, for this example that we line everything up. But you could go ahead and line things up if you want. Okay. So after every old new decision, no matter what we say, we're getting a remember no decision. Now that's a good start, but remember we want this to be a branching loop. We want it to be such that only when participants say an item is old, do we bother asking them to follow that up with a remember no clarification. If they say an item is new, then we don't want to get a remember no response. So how do we actually do that? Well, we're going to do that in this case with a dummy loop. So we're going to insert a new loop and we're going to insert it around the part that we want to be conditional. Under n reps, we're going to actually give it a variable name. So if we put the value of one, then we would always enter this loop and we would always ask the remember no question. Instead, we're going to set a variable name here to do, and we're going to call this variable do RK. This is a variable that's going to tell us if we should do the RK response. We'll call this the RK dummy loop. And you don't need to specify a condition file or anything because we're, we're going to use the, the stimulus file that we were using in the test trial. Again, this loop is not a true loop. This is just a, a dummy loop that we're going to use in order to control whether we even ask the remember no decision. So you can go ahead and click OK. And now what you'll see in your experiment, as I expand this a little bit, is that here is the test trial loop. Here's the old new decision. And we have now the remember no decision encapsulated within this dummy loop. Okay, so how do we make this part of the loop conditional? Well, what we basically want to do is check the response from the old new key and figure out if a C or an M is pressed. If a C is pressed, that means that participants said that the item was old. And in that case, we want this dummy loop to actually run once. On the other hand, if participants press M, indicating the item is new, then we don't want this dummy loop to run. We can control this dummy loop with the variable do RK. If this variable is set to 1, then the dummy loop will run through once. If it's set to 0, then the dummy loop will actually be skipped because it's the number of repetitions it's supposed to run is 0, meaning don't run the loop. So at the end of an old new trial, this is where we want to check the value of key old new. So let's go ahead and insert some code. So there's this object that you'll find in the components section uh, called insert Python commands into an experiment, a code object. And we're going to call this uh, the old new code. Now, when you insert a code object, you can uh, insert some Python code and you can insert it at the beginning of the experiment, which would run when the experiment first starts. That's not what we want. We could run it at the beginning of the routine. So when the old new uh, word is first being shown on the screen and the scale is first being shown before any key is pressed you could run some code that's not what we want you could run this code each frame but that's not actually what we want either what we want is to run this code at the end of the routine after the routine's about to quit and it's a very simple check that we want to perform we want to check if key old new dot keys meaning the key that was pressed it's called keys if that is equal to c then we want do RK to be equal to one. In other words, if subjects called an item old, pressing C, then we want to do the RK part of the loop. Otherwise, we do not want to do the RK part. So we want it to be equal to zero. So that's it. That's all the code you need. And from this, if you go ahead now and run the experiment, what you will find is that you will only see the RK part of the study of the loop if you press C. So I'm going to go ahead and press C here and you'll see I'm asked the remember no question. I'm going to press M here and you'll see that I'm not asked the remember no question. I'll press M again and again and you'll see I'm skipping the remember no question. If I press C now, 
you'll see that once again, I'm getting the question. So using this technique, you can go ahead and create these branching paths in a loop. If we wanted, we could create another set of circumstances over here that would only occur if the uh, M button were pressed in response to the old new. So for instance, we could create a new routine. We'll call this uh, the, the feedback new routine. And we'll go ahead and insert it over here. And on the feedback new routine, let's tell subjects that they pressed new. So we'll call this the feedback new. And we will say, you didn't press C. And that will be a, a feedback displayed to participants. What we're going to do now is insert a dummy loop around this. So we'll call this our trials new dummy. And this one is going to be, uh, let's say, do new. And whether we launch this loop will be dependent on a variable called do new. And what we need to do now is go into our code. And what we can do is, in addition to setting do rk, if somebody pressed C, then we don't want the new loop to occur. And if somebody pressed uh, M, then we do want it to occur. So you can see we're setting RK to 1 and new to 0. We're setting RK here to 0 and new to 1. And by doing this, we, we're selectively turning on this part of the remaining part of the trial, or this part. So if we go ahead and run our experiment now, every time that we press M, it's going to give us that feedback. So I'll press M here. You didn't press C. I'll press C here, and we're getting the remember no. Now you can stack this technique one on top of the other. So if you wanted, after a participant pressed, uh, let's say after they pressed K, you wanted to then ask them their confidence. You know, how confident are you on a scale of one to six? How much familiarity do you have for this item? We could go ahead and create a confidence item here. We could, we could circle that in a dummy loop. And then we could insert some code here that checked to see if they pressed K. And if they pressed K, then go into this other dummy loop. So you can nest these loops in one another. You can create these branching paths. Maybe we want more things to happen in the new part over here. Um, so this technique can really be expanded over and over, and you can create these very sophisticated trials that go down this contingency path. So based on how participants are responding, you can uh, choose to display certain things next. Anyway, uh, I hope that gives you some new ideas for ways that you can use PsychoPy to create uh, complicated experiments. And uh, good luck. This has been a PsychoPy coding quickie.